What should I play? I've got all these games and I don't know what to play. This is ridiculous. No. Street Fighter. Ooh, not bad. No. No. Hmm. Maybe. No, not Zelda. Not Mario. Hmm. Metroid. Super Metroid. Yeah, that's what we're gonna play. Fuck yeah, let's do this. Super Metroid was one of Nintendo's best games out on the Super Nintendo. It was released across the world throughout the first half of 1994. The first time I played it was probably around 1996 or 1997. I was about five or six, I think. So the first time I beat the game, I think I was around 10 years old. Anyways, Super Metroid was developed by Nintendo's R&D 1, which was also responsible for a lot of other really great games, including Super Mario Bros. and Donkey Kong. The Nintendo R&D 1 staff was managed by my boy Gunpei, Gunpei Yokoi, and the game was directed by Yoshio Sakamoto. This was the first Metroid game that he directed, but he also had a hand in the dev of Metroid and Metroid 2 for the Game Boy. Super Metroid was released almost a decade after the first game came out on the NES. But Sakamoto said, quote, we wanted to wait until a true action game was needed, end quote. They said that the developer's primary goal was to make a good action game, and they sure as fuck did. So Yoshio Sakamoto went on to direct many of the following Metroid games, all the way up including the new Metroid for the 3DS. Super Metroid took the original Metroid for NES and improved upon many, many of the problems the first game had. I mean, fuck, Super Metroid is like the original Metroid took a shit ton of steroids and just fucking raged on it. It virtually fixed almost all the problems, at least that I had, with the original Metroid. One of the biggest problems being that fucking map. Since I wasn't around during the NES, Super Metroid was the first Metroid game that I actually played. But when I was around 10 years old, I came across a copy of the original Metroid, and I remember how confused I was when I tried to play it, being there wasn't a goddamn map. Yes! I finally got a copy of Metroid! I can't wait to try this! Where did I put my NES? Okay, cool. This must be the Morph Ball. Yeah. Alright. Awesome. Where I go. Well, let's check the map. What? Where's the map? Where the fuck is the map? I thought the original Metroid sucked at first, but eventually I went back and beat it. It's fun, but it's no Super Metroid. I'm not saying that the original Metroid game wasn't good, I mean it's great, it's one of my favorite Nintendo games, 
Metroid is one of my favorite Nintendo franchises, but Super Metroid is the pinnacle of everything that makes Metroid great. So Super Metroid consisted of a few genres that blended perfectly into an adventure shooter game and an action platformer game. Being able to shoot in all directions was among one of the additions that they added to the game, along with keeping all the weapons you find and being able to switch those fuckers in the pause menu. The music and sound effects in the game really help to make it feel like you're actually there, blowing shit up and kicking some alien ass. The game was difficult, but it was that perfect level of difficulty, something Nintendo was really good at. They didn't make the game obnoxiously hard, but they made the game hard. The difficulty of the game increased the farther into the game you got. So if you spent more time collecting energy tanks, and missiles, and bombs, that would make events later in the game a lot easier to deal with, but not making it so easy that you just kind of fly through it. Collecting all the items was actually a huge challenge in the game, being they cryptically hid shit all over the frickin' map, but the first time you accidentally shot a wall and revealed an energy tank or a missile upgrade, you knew that that's something that you should be looking for. And Nintendo did a really good job of keeping it consistent and giving you visual hints as to where you should probably shoot. The map actually helped with collecting a lot of the items because when you pulled up the map, you'd see these little dots and those dots were where things were hidden. So you'd make your way to the room, either it would be there or you'd shoot all the enemies and then find it or it was one of those cryptic fuckers that you had to shoot the walls or bomb a certain part of the floor and fall through. Anyways, yeah, it was cryptic, but it was fun. There were also guides you could get, like the official Super Metroid Player's Guide, which would help you in showing you a lot of the secrets and where things were hidden. And that's how I actually beat the game the first time. There was no internet, so you couldn't just sit down at your computer and Google, you know, Super Metroid walkthrough. There was walkthroughs, but there was no internet, so that was difficult. But back in the Super Nintendo era, it was word of mouth, so you'd be at school talking to your friends, and one of them had found it, and they told you how to find it. Anyways, yeah, I used the official player's guide to help me get through the game and find a lot of the stuff. So when I was playing Super Metroid, I actually drew my own map with my freaking sweet Crayolas, but I drew the map, and I would mark where I found what. So after I made it through the entire game, I always had that map to reference if I wanted to go back. Yeah, that's something you did back then. I drew a lot of maps. I tried to find something that I don't like about the game, but it's hard. The game is so great. But if I could change something, it would be the fucking items on the map. Make that shit disappear. If I collect the item, that dot should disappear. I fucking wasted so much time looking for an item that I'd already fucking found. Like I said earlier, Super Metroid is part of my Super Nintendo Triforce. It's in the top three with Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, and Super Mario World. Those three games are probably honestly my desert island games, you know, the three games I'd take with me if I was stuck on a fucking island for some reason. Super Metroid is one of those games that I end up going back and playing through at least once a year. There's something just so satisfying about playing that game and making it to the end and kicking Mother Brain's ass. Speaking of Mother Brain, the boss battles in this game are fucking epic. First time I played Ridley, I got my ass handed to me, but I did it again, and again, and again, 
and eventually I figured it out, and I kicked that fucking alien's ass. There's also mini boss battles that are sprinkled throughout the game, and those are always great too. They were one of those things that helped up the difficulty, but not making it unfair. Say you got to Spore Spawn, and you kept getting your ass handed to you and you couldn't quite beat it. You could just reload your save, remember where that was, and go through and see if there's anything you missed. Maybe you missed some missiles, or an energy tank, or something like that. That's what I mean by Nintendo balancing the difficulty. They didn't make it unfair, but they kept the game difficult. But that final boss battle against Mother Brain is forever etched into my brain. It was fucking epic. Your heart's beating a million miles an hour, your hands are sweating, the controller's getting slippery, you ain't blinking, your eyes hurt, and finally, you blast Mother Brain out of her fucking tank, and she turns into this weird, like, fucking dinosaur thing. Then, she knocks your ass back with that super fucking rainbow laser motherfucker, and you think that's it, oh fuck, I'm dead. But, the Metroid shows up, and she absorbs that blast for you, restoring your health, it makes your charger this badass fucking awesome gun and you get those last shots in and finally, finally, you fucking murder that brain. But that's not it. That's not the end of the game. You've got to get the fuck off that planet before it fucking explodes. So you take off and you're running through and platforming and falling off the platforms and screaming, fuck, there's no way I'm ever going to fucking make it out of this. And then you get to the elevator, you get back outside, and you jump in your ship, and you blast the fuck out of there. God, it's awesome. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. You watch Samus take off from that planet, fly back into space, just as the planet fucking explodes, and then that's it, and the credits roll. Then the percentage shows up, the completion percentage. So you hit that reset button and you jump the fuck back in. 